Hi, I'm Dr. Francis. I'm a world-renowned wildlife nutritionist. You may not have heard of me, but your arowana fish sir has. So let's talk about if you should be feeding fish to your dog or cat today. Yes, they make a drilling sound even though they're fish. Everyone is on the hunt for the latest, best protein for their dog or cat. They want something that is novel so that won't cause allergies in their dogs or cat. They want something that's high in nutrients, fatty acids, something that is the full package. Well, maybe fish is the answer, or maybe it isn't. There are pros and cons to feeding fish to your dog or cat. Let's explore these. The first thing to consider is protein quality. Fish protein itself is extremely bioavailable, digestible, and has a lot of amino acids. It is an excellent choice for protein quality, and it's usually quite novel. You do see some fish meal in some pet foods, but make sure you read the ingredients list. If your pet hasn't had fish meal in any of their food, then fish is a novel protein. It's useless to just talk about novel proteins in space as an abstract concept, because if it's a novel protein, but your pet has had it, guess what? It's not novel anymore. So if your pet has not had fish before, then you can consider feeding it. Fish are also excellent sources of certain hard to find nutrients like iron, B vitamins, selenium, and fatty acids. But certain fish, actually most fish, are not so great sources of very important nutrients like zinc and for the majority of fish, copper. So you can't just feed fish on its own. You probably will need to add in some other ingredients or use fish as a topper for something that is more complete or at least something that has the missing nutrients in order to make sure that the meal is fully balanced. Bigger fish like tuna have a better micronutrient profile than smaller fish, but they could also have some toxic heavy metals like mercury in them. So it's best to stick clear of highly predator fish. One of the best reasons to feed fish or to include fish as part of your pet's diet are the fatty acids. Fish are a great source of omega-3 fatty acids. These are the fatty acids that are limiting in pretty much every other kind of ingredients or food that we're giving them. So giving a right amount of fish can help to balance out all these important fats. In fact, there's a lot of studies that show that adding fish to your pet's diet can help prevent symptoms of arthritis, IBS, inflammation overall. So there's definitely a purpose and a use in using fish in your pet's diet. What makes the fatty acid special is that they're the animal forms of this fatty acid, EPA and DHA, which means your dog and cat can absorb and use it readily. It's not the same fatty acids that you would find in hemp seed oil or linseed, flaxseed, um, other kind of plant sources. Those are ALA, those are plant sources of omega-3, and your dog or cat are not very good at converting it to the active form. So it's important to get an animal source of fatty acids. Other sources could be stuff like krill or maybe even seaweed, but fish is the most readily available and affordable option of these fatty acids. So fish on their own may not be nutritionally complete, but they could be a wonderful addition to any other pet food diet, whether they're kibble, add some fish on it, whether it's a fresh meal, whether it's raw or cooked. The only thing is you do not want to feed the fish raw itself. We always recommend that either you cook the fish first or you give preserved fish, which has been preserved in uh, the cans of oil or water. Of course, giving the canned fish in water is better than the oil because you don't necessarily need those extra calories. And also want to make sure that they're not in brine. You don't want the, that extra salt either. As the main protein for one of your pet's meals, you can consider a big meaty fish like barramundi or snapper. These are excellent sources of protein. They have a lot of nutrients, but you do need to make sure that other ingredients will supplement the missing zinc, you know, the missing fatty acids, because it's not such an oily fish. You want to make sure that you have enough vitamin E as well. Don't worry about the vitamin D. If you want to use small oily fish like anchovies, sardines, or mackerel, these are great because they are high in the omega-3, so you don't need to have any other sources, but they're lacking a lot of very important nutrients. So you probably want to use these as a topper or as a complement. You don't want to build an entire diet around small oily fish. These are better used as, you know, kind of a side piece or a side dish just to help balance everything out. Well, I hope this video was helpful. Absolutely include fish in your dog or cat's diet. Remember, they're not nutritionally complete. You need to add some other stuff to balance it out. But fish are superstar ingredients to include in your pet's diet. Just make sure that you cook them or you get some preserved ones. 
so that it's safe. Thanks for watching the video. Subscribe, like this video, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, wherever you can find my face, press like. Bye-bye. <laughs>